This video will guide you through designing a schematic using Altium Designer, the first step in the PCB design workflow. To give you something to aim for, here is the final schematic for the example project discussed earlier. As you can see, it's neatly and professionally drawn with a well-detailed title block and relevant section headings for different componentry within the schematic. Also note that the components are appropriately named and well positioned in the document and the component connections are also labeled descriptively. You should take pride in the presentation of your schematic because a neat and professional design will allow any user to understand immediately what the purpose of your schematic is. This makes troubleshooting an error in your design much simpler. The first step is to open up Altium and create a new Altium project via File, New, Project. So here's Altium. Let's create a new Altium project. File, New. We have several options here. So we can choose to create a new schematic document, a PCB document. However, they will be free and floating. They won't be tied to an immediate project. As a result, we wish to create a project that has a schematic, a PCB, and everything under the same roof. To do that, create a project via this option here. There are several options for creating a new Altium project. We can just do a printed circuit board project, uh, a field programmable array project, and several other types. Another important one is an integrated library project. A video later in this set of screencasts will show you how to create your own library of components. But for now, let's create a PCB project. There are several project templates that show different project sizes for your PCB. However, in this case, we just want a default project template. Now you should choose a suitable name for your PCB project. In our case, the example project is the Wireless Controller Shield. Altium will create a project folder where all the documents will be stored under the same roof. I recommend creating a dedicated folder for all of your Altium projects to be housed in the same location. I've done this by storing my projects under the folder Altium projects inside of my users documents folder. It's also important to note that Altium Designer has its own version control management system for managing the repository of your PCB project. We won't be doing this because it's beyond the scope of the video. So for now, let's proceed with the default project that we've created. So I've created an empty Altium project and it has a wireless controller shield as its title. The next step is to actually add in our schematic. To create a new schematic document and add it to your project, simply right click the project in your project's workspace panel. So right click your project wireless controller shield and select add new to project. Note that we can add in other documents, PCB documents, uh, a bill of materials, and so on and so forth. For now, we just want to add in a schematic. And when we do that, it creates a new schematic document uh, that is by default an empty template. A couple of things. The bottom right hand table is what is known as the title block. It's useful for displaying the title and author of the document. Also note that the outer border contains alphanumeric symbols. This is for locating specific circuitry within the schematic. Oftentimes schematics can be large and unwieldy and it's difficult to isolate a particular point of interest. To do so, we have a lookup value that allows us to search within the schematic to find what we're looking for. For example, if something was in the upper left-hand corner, we could locate it through the coordinates A1. So we've created an empty schematic. The first thing we should do is save it and give it a name. So click the floppy disk save symbol in the top left hand. Select a suitable schematic name. In my case, there's just one schematic for this entire project. As a result, I'm going to give it the exact same name as my project name. Note that if you have a very large project, you might often need several schematic documents and each document will have to have a different name. I've saved the schematic, but I haven't yet saved the project. So what you should often do is go to file, save all, and it will save the project and all documents within the project. Once you've created an empty schematic document, the next step is to add all of the component libraries you're going to use throughout the project. For this project, only one library is required, and you can find it in the resources archive file, downloadable from the YouTube video description link. Make sure you've downloaded and extracted the library file jcu.intlib from the resources archive file. To extract the file, simply right click the resources file and select extract to local resources. 
The JCU library file you wish to use is jcu.intlib, which is an integrated library for the Altium environment. To install this library, we have several options. Let's go to Altium to have a look at them. So the way you install a library in Altium is by accessing the library workspace panel. The default location for the workspace panel is on the right hand side of the screen, libraries. To install a library file, select the libraries button. And now we have two options. We can add a library to a project so that it is always tied within that project. Or we can choose to install a library in the current version of Altium so that we can use its components for whichever project we choose. This is really up to you, but I prefer to install the library to Altium rather than embedding it in my project. To do this, select the Install tab for available libraries and then the Install button down below. Select the side dropdown and select Install from File. Now browse to the JCU integrated library inside the Resources folder that you've downloaded. So here's my downloads, the Extracted Resources folder, and the JCU integrated library. Close the Libraries dialog, and now you will have access to all of the components inside of that library file. To access the different components, change the current view in the Libraries workspace panel and find your JCU integrated library. This library file was developed by us for this screencast. It consists of the elements required to complete the schematic and the PCB for the example project. As you can see, we have the Arduino Uno shield, a JCU logo, uh, a joystick component, a RoboClub logo, and a switch. The other components that are required are default components, which exist inside of the default miscellaneous devices and connectors library inside of Altium. Now that you've added the libraries and you have an empty schematic file, I believe the next best thing to do is to populate the title block. Remember, the title block displays the title and author of the document. It really makes it look neat and professional. To do this, you actually have to set global parameters that are existing inside of your document so that they can be tied to the title block. Go to the Design drop-down menu and select Document Options. So here's our Altium uh, Designer environment. Um, this is the title block which we wish to populate. We need to go to the Document Options under the Design drop-down menu. Select the very last option, Document Options. Browse to the Parameters tab, and these are the full list of options that we can modify that will document and populate the title block. So the very first one to change will be the title of your schematic document. In this case, Wireless Controller Shield Schematic. Another important one to set is the author. To access this, look for the Drawn By Name column. You can type in your name. Other useful things to enter are the revision number. So I'm going to follow a major minor revision scheme where the very first letter is the number of the major revision. In this case, this is the first version of the project and the minor, which indicates whether minor changes have been made. So if I was to make a small change to the schematic, I might update my minor change sequentially to be one, two, three, or whatever, but I'll start at zero. And if I were to make a major change to the schematic, I would update the major number sequentially to two, three, and so on and so forth. Other useful features to enter are the sheet number and sheet total. So if you have a multi-sheet document, um, this is very useful, but in our case, this is the first sheet and in total, there is only one sheet. So I've entered those two criteria. Similarly, uh, you can enter the document number. Uh, again, if you have multiple schematic documents, you will need to have different document numbers for each one. So let's enter those values and hopefully see the title block update. So I've made those changes. However, the title block has not updated. The reason for this is Altium selects a default template that does not link the title block parameters to the global parameters that we just set. What we need to do is change Altium's schematic template to link those attributes. To do this, go back to the design document options. Design document options, and you want to go to the template tab on the final right. Now, from the drop-down menu, select an A4 template that is in landscape orientation. So you have A1, A0, A2, A3, A4. You can choose a larger one if you wish, but A4 is generally acceptable. Uh, and make sure you select landscape and not portrait. 
Once you've done that, select OK, and you'll notice that the title block has been updated with the global parameters that we just set. An important thing to note are the several asterisks inside of this box right here. To find out what those are, we can just have a quick look again at the document options. And those are actually the organization and address lines. So if I was to remove the address lines, one, two, three, four, just subtract the asterisks from those values and also subtract the asterisks from the organization, you'll see those disappear. Now, what might be more useful here is a logo of your organization. Uh, so fortunately, inside of the library file that we've provided you with, there's a James Cook University logo and also a Robo Club logo. I'm going to add in the James Cook University logo into this box. Go to the Libraries tab, uh, browse to our JCU Integrated Library in the top drop-down box, and select the James Cook University logo, which is the second component down from the top, and go to the top right button and select Place JCU Logo. Now return to your schematic and you can actually place the logo in the middle of that box, wherever you wish. Press Escape to complete the component placement. Now we have a gorgeous title block and a very well-designed schematic with the logo of our organization as well as Altium's logo and very useful information. You can now start placing components onto your schematic. I generally prefer to place all of the large components onto the schematic before making any connections. So at this point, you should try and produce a schematic similar to the example document shown earlier. Let's have another look at that document. Look in your Reese's folder that you recently extracted for the schematic PDF. This is what we'll be designing. So we need to place an Arduino Uno shield, a Bluetooth 4-pin header, a joystick component, and six switches. Let's begin. To place the components, browse to the library workspace panel, change your library to the JCU integrated library, and first of all, we'll place the Arduino Uno shield. Select the component and then place button in the top right. Once you click the place button, a next click will place it within the document. While you're in this hovering mode, press the tab key. It allows you to modify several properties of the component before you place it to the board. Some properties you may wish to set are the designator. So the designator is basically the board's ID for that component. Typically you see microcontrollers and uh, integrated chips labeled with a U and then a number. So for the Arduino, I'm going to label it U1. This is the only change I wish to make at this point, so I'll press OK and continue with placing my Arduino. I'm going to place it in the middle simply by left clicking and the component is placed. To stop placing additional components, press the escape key. Let's continue by now placing the joystick component. Select the joystick from the available options and the place button in the top right. As before, you can press the tab key to modify its properties. So the joystick is also what we call an integrated chip, um, and so we will label it U2. Typically, as you add in more devices that have a similar designator, you will increase the number for that designator. I'm happy with those changes. Now I'll press OK and place the joystick and press Escape. Now let's add the switches. So there are six push button switches in total for our controller, and so we'll need to add six switch elements into our schematic. To do so, simply select switch and then the place button and we can add them in sequentially. Before we do that, press tab and we'll actually set up the first switch to have a designator S1. Press OK to continue placement and now click anywhere on the schematic to add the switch. You'll notice after sequential clicks that the S1 designator will increase to S2, S3, S4, S5 and S6. This is a useful feature and it saves you a little bit of time having to change those designators yourself. So now we'll add in the header for the Bluetooth module connection. So the Bluetooth module connection is simply just a four pin header. This is a standard component and it exists in Altium uh, in the default miscellaneous connectors library. To change to that library, select the drop down menu and select miscellaneous connectors. We now need to search for a four pin header. Scroll down until you see the headers and we're looking for header four isolated. And there it is there. 
Notice there's a four by two header or a four pin right angled header. We just want the standard four pin header. Select the component and then select the place button. Before placing it, press tab to change its options. You'll often see headers and miscellaneous connectors with the designator P. We'll change that to P1 because it's the first header in our circuit. We have now placed all of the main components for the schematic. The next step is to ensure that we have the correct footprints for each of those components before we continue. So let's have a quick look at our print circuit board design that we need to create later on. The PCB PDF inside of our resources folder. So as you can see, uh, the six switches are a little bit different. We have two smaller switches, which are our start and select switches in the middle of the controller. And then we have four larger push button switches for our A, B, X, and Y. This means we have six switches, but two different footprints. So going back to our schematic, we need to modify two of our switches to have that smaller footprint and four of our other switches to have the larger footprint. We can actually do this in the schematic. And the way you do it is by double clicking on the item of interest, our switch, and looking at the menu to the bottom right, models. This models menu tells us which footprint is tied to the current model in our schematic. So for the library that we've created, there are actually two types of switch footprints, a standard tactile switch and a mini tactile switch. So if you want to match your design up to the example project that we've illustrated, make sure that you have two mini tactile switch selected. So I select the mini tactile switch and then OK. And I've done this for S6 and S5. As a result, S1, 2, 3, and 4 are tactile switches, and S5 and S6 are mini tactile switches. Now we can start to make the connections between the different components to complete our circuit. Two different tools can be used to connect the schematic components uh, to complete the circuit. The first tool is a wire tool. It allows you to draw visible lines to physically connect the component pins on the schematic. The second tool is what is known as the net tool. It allows you to make referential connections between pins by labeling them. Also of note is the VCC power port and the ground power port. These two tools are required to connect a supply voltage and ground connections respectively. Let's begin by placing VCC power ports and grounds across the entire schematic where necessary. So let's have a look at our example schematic to see exactly where the 5 volt and ground connections need to be made. So we require a 5 volt connection and a ground connection to the Bluetooth port. We require 5 volts and ground to the joystick and also to the Arduino shield. The buttons are also grounded on one side. So let's add in those power ports uh, using Altium. The power port components can be added to the circuit via the place drop-down menu. Then select place power port. Now you can change the name and net of the power port using tab. Press tab and now we're going to apply five volts to different parts of the circuit. I rename the net to five V and press okay. So we needed five volts near the Bluetooth, five volts near the joystick, five volts near the Arduino. You press escape to stop adding voltage power ports. Now we need to add the matching ground connections. So the ground power port tool can be found in the menu toolbar at the top of the screen. You're looking for a series of horizontal lines in the shape of a triangle. That is the symbol for ground. Select that and add a ground symbol next to each five volt source. 5 volt for the Bluetooth, uh, ground for the joystick, a ground pin for the Arduino, and a couple of ground pins for our switches. Press escape to stop adding ports. Now all we need to do is wire connections between our pins. As discussed earlier, there are two methods, wires and nets. Let's begin by making wire connections to our 5 volt and ground pins uh, using the wire tool. To use the wire tool, select the place drop down menu and find wire. Zoom in to our Bluetooth connection and we'll wire 5 volts and ground uh, where necessary. So, as you can see, uh, when you're hovering with the wire tool, the selector crosshair will highlight red when you're over a valid pin connection. I'm hovering over the 5 volt connection and I press cleft click 
and I'm beginning to draw a wire, uh, and now I need to complete where that wire travels to. So the bivolt connection goes to the first pin of the Bluetooth header, and as you can see, the circuit is connected. Now the ground pin goes from the second pin of the Bluetooth connector to our ground power port. Additional clicks allow you to add in additional right angle corners. Press escape to stop adding wire. So there we've completed a five volt and ground connection to our Bluetooth header. Let's continue and add in wire connections to the rest of our five volt and ground connections. Looking at the joystick, let's add in some wire. Oh, and I'll just quickly note that in order to zoom, you can hold the control key on your keyboard and scroll your mouse wheel. That's often the best way to be able to zoom in and out and rotate your view. So I'm going to zoom in on my uh, joystick and let's wire up the 5 volts and ground using place and wire. Start at one end, right angle in the middle and finish at the other end. And continue the same method with the ground connection. Press escape to stop adding. So that's our uh, 5 volt and ground for the joystick. Let's now zoom out and we'll zoom in on the Arduino and add in our five volt and ground connections. So again, we'll grab the wire tool. So now we see that the five volts is connected to the five volt pin on the Arduino. And we have three ground connections on the Arduino. And typically we will want to ground all of them to our ground power port. We can do that simply by attaching each pin to a straight line of wire you'll notice that a junction is added, telling us that there are intersections um, that are okay uh, for this ground pin. And another junction is added, and now we've connected all ground pins of the Arduino uh, to ground. We'll finally zoom out, and now we'll add in the ground pins for our switches. Before I do that, I'd just like to align these up in a nice formation. And now we can begin connecting each one to ground. So we grab our wire tool, place wire, and connect each pin to ground and make some junctions as well. Let's complete the wiring of the bottom switches using the wire tool. So now we've completed the power port and ground connections using the wire tool. The next step is to complete the signal connections and we're going to use the net tool to do that. So let's have another look at our schematic to see what is left to do. So all that's left is labeling a receive and transmit pin for the Bluetooth. Uh, so let's do that now for the Bluetooth. So what we need to do is create a connection between pin three of the Bluetooth and the RX pin on the Arduino Uno shield. The way we do that is we create a net on each pin and give it the same name, which is RX. So let's illustrate those two connections using nets. So let's make those two connections using the net tool. Click the drop down place menu, scroll to net label. And before we place a net label, let's press the tab button so that we can set its name prior to that. So the first net we wish to place is the RX net. And this will connect pin three on the Bluetooth. So let's zoom in on the Bluetooth and add the net to that pin. Make sure that your crosshair goes red on the pin, indicating that the connection can be made. And now let's connect it up to the RX pin on the Arduino. Again, look for the red crosshair and left click. Simply by doing that, Pin three on the Bluetooth is connected to the RX pin on the Arduino Uno shield. Let's do the same thing with the TX net name. And the TX net name will connect pin four of the Bluetooth to the TX pin on the Arduino microcontroller. You can press escape to stop adding in uh, net labels. Now let's look back at the circuit and see what other net labels we need to add. So let's look at the joystick. We need to add in a vertical and horizontal and press nets, which will be connected to three analog pins on the Arduino Uno shield. So let's create our net labels by going place, net label, press tab to change the name. And initially we'll create the name a vertical. Vertical will be placed on the V 
pin of the joystick. So unfortunately here, if I were to place the vertical text right on that pin, it would kind of overlap with my component and it wouldn't look nice. So I'm going to place the net label a bit further out from the pin and connect them later using the wire tool. I'll do the same for my Arduino connection. So the vertical is going to A0, that's done. Let's change to use the horizontal net label. Horizontal pin will be next to H and next to A1. And finally, we'll use uh, the press net label. And this will connect from press on the joystick to A2 on the Arduino microcontroller. Now remember the job is not done here because we didn't make a physical connection from the position of the net label to the pins. So grab some wire tool via the place drop down menu and wire. And we're going to zoom in and connect the wire from our pin to our net. And again, you'll notice the red crosshair under the net label indicating that a connection has been made. Zoom in on the Arduino microcontroller, left click and left click, left click, left click. And there we go. Those connections are now made. So what else is left? Let's have another look. So we need to actually connect our input signals from the buttons to our Arduino controller. Uh, A, B, X, Y, start and select. Uh, so as you can see, I've got start and select on S5 and S6, and A, B, and X, Y on S1 to S4. So let's complete that schematic. Similar to before, I will use a net label via the place drop-down menu. Select net label. Press tab to change the name. We'll start with A, and A is going to be on S1, and it's also going to be on D2. Now we can change to B. For S2 and D3, X for S3 and D4, and Y for S4 and D5. Now we'll use start and select for the final two pin connections. Start will be S5. Again, I don't want to overlap. Oh, no, that'll actually fit, so I'll place it right there. Start, which will go to D6, and finally select which will go to S6 switch 6 and D7. So that are all the connections made on the circuit. We've used the net tool and the wire tool and we've maintained a familiar feel so that it looks like a neat and professional drawing. The final step with designing the schematic is to actually annotate the schematic and complete the professional look. So a nice way to automate the annotation of a component names is by selecting the annotate schematics quietly option. So let's go back to Altium. So you'll notice that I manually changed my component names to be U1, uh, P1, U2, and so on and so forth. You don't actually have to do that. You can use the annotate schematics quietly to perform this automatically. The way we do that, we go to tools and select annotate schematics quietly. It's a bit further down, annotate schematics quietly, select yes, and it actually picks up that I've changed the component names manually and there hasn't been any errors, so it doesn't suggest any changes. It's always a good thing to check uh, before you finish your schematic. Also, um, what I tend to do with my schematics is to label the different parts of your design so that they're more easily identified and easier to understand. So we can simply place text onto the schematic of various sizes and uh, name the different parts of the circuit that we want to. So the way we do this, we go back to Altium, select place, and we'll be placing a text string. This is quite a small piece of text, so to modify the font size and the actual text, press tab. So what we'll do is change from Times New Roman 10 to perhaps Times New Roman 16 and text. So there are several parts of this circuit. I broke it down to a Bluetooth, a joystick, Arduino Uno shield, and buttons. So let's add in those text. First we have the Bluetooth label. Uh, I'll place that above the Bluetooth component. Then we'll type in the joystick. Next, our Arduino Uno shield. And finally, uh, the set of buttons that we're using on the controller. 
press escape to stop adding text strings and you can zoom out by control scrolling or another method for zooming once you're finished is to change view and fit all objects or view and fit document is a bit nicer and there's our completed schematic uh, everything is added as we wanted to and now we can actually move on to the next step uh, uh, the next video will translate our schematic to a printed circuit board layer where you actually decide what goes where on the physical board.